something about it, you are part of the problem. We're past the point where it's like, it's not in your governance space, so you got nothing to do with it. No, if you don't speak up on these issues, you a part, you just as bad. You gotta be better as, as a American people, but you gotta say something. You gotta feel a certain way about a man, a regular man, just being choked out and killed. Damn. Praise out to his family, everyone else affected by this, but we gotta stop this violence, man. As a husband, a father, a son, like, we gotta be better. We just gotta be better, man. Like, speak out in any way you feel comfortable. You just need to run sometimes because to collect your thoughts or, you know, you have these emotions and feelings, so you just wanna put the best message out there. So, number one, hope everyone's day is going well. Number two. Because we're tired. <laughs> Boy, are we tired. But that's a constant feeling too. Come on and disrupt with us. If you do not share my skin color, share this message. And that breaks my heart. I've seen it before, but that breaks my heart. That breaks all of our hearts, right? But we gotta mobilize and we gotta share this message. Because we're tired. It was in his DNA. It was almost like, and it wasn't like, I saw a scary sense of enjoyment. It's important to any movement, to any movement, we need allies. We need disruptors. That cop, look at his eyes. You may not also feel it necessary to share the message, to have the conversation, but we need your help. Nothing can be done just by us. Yes, it can be, because we are a powerful people, but we also need some disruptors that don't look like us. ...video and not only empathize, mobilize, organize, help us stand on the front lines. If you do not look like me, share this video. Silence is oftentimes considered agreement. And while you may not agree, but I'm saying if you don't look like me, share this message. If you do not share my skin color, share this message because we need more than ever. We need allies. Not only do we need allies, we need disruptors. Allies is just the bare minimum. We need disruptors. We need people to have conversations. We need people to watch that horror. So what I'm saying is if you look like me, you know this, you get it. You share my skin color, you've seen it. It's a look, it's a wave, it's a gesture. It's whatever it is, you've experienced it. You saw in that cop's eyes when he was murdering George Floyd. Look at his eyes. That's in his DNA. It's taught. It's inbreded. Embedded. <laughs> That's in our DNA. It's in the DNA to fight, to still push forward, to still be kind, to still exceed beyond expectations, even when we're told we're not that great. What's also in folks' DNA, nothing new. You've seen all the videos circulating from 40 years ago with black folks in tears crying, fed up. But no matter what, we're resilient and we're hopeful. We all know why she did that. We all know why she thought she could weaponize her fragility. We all know that black men in America are often hunted and murdered. Police brutality. <laughs> We know Amy Cooper right away, right? And what Amy Cooper did has always happened. We just have cameras, right? To catch it. But why did Amy Cooper do that? We all- In Minnesota, it just goes to show you, like, this is why he took a knee and he didn't do anything harmful. He just took a knee at an NFL game. We, we have people protesting on city steps around America because they want to open up, but they got guns. You know, they're, they're walking around as militia with guns and they're protesting, you know, to open, you know, their cities back up. Like that's within their right to protest, but nobody said anything about them. You know, they got guns. Like they want to shoot somebody. Kaepernick just kneeled. Like, don't be angry at him because that's his right.
to protest in his way. Just you should appreciate this is America. This is the way. This is why you have your your freedoms. This is why, uh, you know, we have so you can speak up and 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 you know say the things that you want to say. Obviously, without harming people. Peaceful protests. Some of you don't understand it. Some of you are too young to 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 have a grip on this reality. This is the world that we live in. But don't just sit behind your keyboard and be a warrior and try to slander me or someone you know that is speaking out because it's something we don't like. No, we're not going anywhere else. This is where we live. We believe in our rights in this country and we believe that the people that are making the laws need to pass different laws and need to hold people accountable for their crimes and their wrongdoings. If you don't believe in that, then we'll continually be divided in this country. I said this before, are you a part of the cure or are you a part of the disease? Don't create the argument, don't create the issue, don't create the the animosity to happen. You know, you, I, I look over in New Zealand, I look in Canada, like things happen. When things happen, we have to change. When bad things happen, we have to change. Or the fear just come out with solutions. I don't want to hear, oh, that's wrong or that's messed up. Like, that's not, that, that's not where we are. That's not where I am. Don't come onto my page and talk about these statistics and this is why this is wrong. No, just come up with a solution. Just give me some, some points on what we can do to be better. You know, we waste all this time pointing fingers at each other and wow, this is messed up and you need to do this. It's like too much. It's too much noise. Just bring me solutions. You know, the noise, I just block the noise and I delete the comments. Like, I don't want to hear that noise because it gets us nowhere. It just, it's like we, we have, we now live in a society where everybody has to be right. And everybody has to like say something and I got to attack this. And how come you won't let me speak on your post and write a comment because I have something to say? Like, it, it's, it's okay. Just let's have a solution. Let's figure out a way that we can stop these problems from happening. That's where we live now. That's what we have to do. Like be upset enough that you say you don't want this to happen anymore. It doesn't matter what color you are. Let's try to fix these, fix these issues. Let's try to make truly the world a better place, this country a better America. Like let's do that. I know it's within each and every one of you. But if you just want to continue to point fingers and no, you have to hold people accountable and we had to figure out how to keep things like this from happening. And I'm ready to hear any solutions to people that have growth mindsets. How do we improve? How do we grow? It's not how do white people grow or how do black people grow or how do Asian people grow. It's about how do we grow because a rising tide floats all ships. So if we create a system where everybody can succeed, then everybody will grow. That's where we got to be. We can't sit back and just say, oh, it didn't happen to me. So I don't care. I don't give a damn. They should have been doing that anyway. No, it doesn't work. Because before you know it, it's going to be at your doorstep. You have to be willing to step up and speak out on things that are unjust. And what it boils back down to is your civic duty. Everyone. Don't say, I don't vote because my vote doesn't matter. We, we have an election coming up in November and everybody needs to come out and vote because we've had too many things happen in the last couple of years that have shaken the foundation of this country. And whether it's the president, the Senate, Congress, your local politicians, like, there's too many things that happen that we see people that don't do anything. Like, change has to... We need people in office that aren't afraid to make a difference. It's like everybody's going along these party lines and everybody's trying to appease their friends, their buddies, or whatever it may be, or the people whose pockets uh, that they're in. 
But we need people that are going to change things. Like if there's a school shooting, let's put laws in place that stop that. Whatever that means. I don't know what that means. But people who are going to fight and not just send prayers and thoughts and then all of a sudden hope you forget about it and then we move on and then wait till another one happens. Like we really truly need to gather and get people, these people out of office that do not do anything to help us, to help people live every day. That's what it boils down to. Because we keep seeing the same things over and over again. And that is the true definition of insanity. And that's going to make us all crazy long term. And we end up fighting with each other. I want to live in a society where I see the bad guy go down. I, it's just plain and simple. If somebody does something, you know, bad, I want to see them, you know, you have a trial and you go down. I don't want to see people able to do things and there's no accountability. I don't want to see people, you know, get killed and then, you know, the person who did it, you know, they just walk off scot-free. Like, we have to make sure that we put people in positions of power to change our laws that affect all of us for the good so we can live in a highly civilized society where everybody has rights and no one's rights are greater than the other, regardless of what your income is. That's the America that I hope to live in someday. In the meantime, we all are going to be watching Minnesota and how they handle this. Um, I know they fired the officers. They're all complicit in this murder. Uh, but we're going to see how they handle this because this is precedent set. This is precedent set that we're all going to see, you know, how they deal with this going forward. Don't try to make excuses for them. This black guy must have been up to no good. He was resisting arrest. No, it's clear murder. So we're going to watch. We're going to see. We're going to pay attention. Because right now, this is, this is going to affect us all going forward. Because we're going to see it happen again. Shamefully saying it's going to happen again. But right now, we need justice. I, I said to you all that we need to find solutions. You know, we had to figure out. Um, how we need to proceed going forward. And it's something that I've been saying and I've been thinking about it, you know, a lot. And um, I know a lot of people will disagree, which is fine. I, you know, we all come from uh, different schools of thought. Um, but I, I'm, I want to figure out how to help these these situations along. Obviously, you got to get people who are, are corrupt and racist out of positions of power, one. Um, Two, it's important that, you know, what I, I truly believe, you know, if you, you go back to, uh, you know, to think about movies that you watch, you know, where, you know, you see like a kid in the neighborhood, you know, get in trouble and you know, that kid, you know, gets brought home uh, by the local sheriff and he comes up and he goes, yeah, Jimmy's been, you got in trouble again. I had to pick him up and he brought him home because the cop went to school with Jimmy's parents. So the cop didn't overreact. He knows he's a good kid. He knows him. And so what, what this brings me to propose is that I know people don't like it because sometimes like I'm where I live, you know, say, say I live in, in downtown Miami and there'll be a, a, a cop that, lives in you know downtown miami but every day he drives to uh palm beach you know because his cruiser says palm beach police whatever so he he patrols in palm beach but he lives in miami so he he stays out of his jurisdiction i know there's going to be so much you know before you guys get to saying this that the third and trying to d dispute what i'm saying is I, I truly believe in neighborhoods, you know, all across America, the police that patrol in certain in neighborhoods should have to live in those neighborhoods. So when a cop pulls you over, he knows you, he knows your family, he knows the community. He's around there often. He's just not some cop coming from that lives 60 miles away. And so he could care less. And he's, he, he, he looks at you like he just can't stand you or he, he just can't wait to get out of here and go home and go back to his neighborhood. 
we need to start making sure that our police know the people who they are protecting and serving. You know, not just having cops come in from other communities that are patrolling or policing over people who don't know who their subjects are. You know, if if a kid gets in trouble, like, because, it, listen, all kids make mistakes. We don't throw our kids away. Like, you know, uh, prison reform, that's a whole other conversation. But oftentimes kids get in trouble and cops just, you know, treat them like they're the ultimate suspect. You know, but, you know, little Jimmy, he's always given the benefit of the doubt because the cop knows his dad. You know, he gives him a break. He brings him home and says, you know, I, I saw your son doing this and just make sure that you have a conversation with him. We need more policing like that. And I think, I believe, I truly believe that the only way that that happens is if we have police that come from those communities that patrol their communities. Now, I'm sure you have plenty of dispute argument or feedback, but the only way, you know, certain things like this work is if you try it, if you do it, if you put it into effect, you know, so, you know, people in the communities know the people who are driving the police cars. You can have a conversation with them. You know, if a person truly is doing something wrong and they deserve to be, you know, put in jail or, or reprimanded. But for the most part, you know, a police knows the community that they protect and serve over because they come from that community. We have to implement.